everybody, Bob Olson here with Afterlife TV. This is where I talk about the big questions you have concerning life and death. You can find this and every episode at afterlifetv.com. Hey everybody, Bob Olson here with Afterlife TV. Today is another bite-sized episode sponsored by bestpsychicdirectory.com. Best Psychic Directory is my site actually where I have screened and improved over 800 psychics and mediums and tarot readers and animal communicators and energy healers. There's a whole bunch of different categories there. You can search people out by location. You can search them out by specialty. You can even read reviews that have been written by you, the public, who have had readings with these people and are writing about what those readings were like with them. So check out bestpsychicdirectory.com. Now we're going to talk about the continuation of life after we die. Now, first thing I want to say that I, I say all the time to you, which is don't take my word for any of this. Don't take my word for anything that I ever say. What I'm really trying to do is inspire you to become your own afterlife investigator. But a lot of times when we have no concept of a particular idea, we're not even able to recognize it when we see it. So one of the things that I like to do here on this show and what I did in my book, Answers About the Afterlife, is give you my perspective based on years of investigating life after death so that by knowing what my view of things is, then it might help you to create your own views. And really that's what this is all about. Now, in talking about the continuation of life after we die, I was going to call this the second half of life. And of course, it's not as accurate a description as the continuation of life. And also it implies that half our life is one place and the other half is in another place. But using that first description that I didn't use, the second half of life, what I'm really here to talk to you about is the fact that our life experience, our single human life experience is partly while we're here in the physical, right? The physical realm, the physical dimension in our physical bodies. That is part of the experience. The other part of the experience, and you you might say the second half of the life experience is in the spiritual realm after you die. Okay. So this is where the continuation of life is. And I don't think a lot of people think of it that way. I think a lot of people think of life as, you know, beginning when you're born and ending when you die. And the fact is, based on all the evidence that I've seen about life after death, is that no, in fact, we have certain experiences while we're here in the physical. And it is really, you know, the most important part in some ways, because that's where we are making choices, making decisions. This is where our actions are very important. But it's the second part, the second half, the second whatever, continuation while we're in the spirit world after our death, that we still continue to learn and grow from the, the experience as being the spirit of you, whatever it is, or the spirit of the person who died. So I'm going to use myself as an example. So the spirit of Bob. So here we are. I'm, I'm Bob Olson. I'm living in the physical world. When I die, I am then going to go home to the spirit world And my experience as Bob has not completed. My experience as Bob is still continuing. And that's what I want to talk to you about right now is how it continues. Now, a lot of us have heard about and we're familiar with the life review process. And I'm not even really talking about that. That certainly is part of it. But it goes way beyond the life review process. And the life review process, if you're not familiar, is just this experience that we have soon after our death, soon after our going home to the spirit world. And we are shown our life in the physical realm, almost in three-dimensional movie form, where we get to not only see what we did 
you know, the choices that we made, the actions that we took, but we get to see how they affected other people. Now, that's all very important, and we'll have another show on that someday, just specifically the life review process. But I think a lot of people are pretty familiar with it. A lot's been written about it. We've seen it in movies. So it's not hard to get information about the life review process. What a lot of people are unaware of and don't talk about much is the idea that our loved ones in spirit not including the life review process after that, are then able to actually follow us in real time because there's no time where they are. So they're following us because we live in the realm of time. So they're following us in real time, watching how our life takes place. They're able to see how their existence here when they were alive has affected their loved ones, their friends, their family members, their coworkers, In fact, how would their existence here affected the whole world? This is a really important part of any human lifetime is this continuation of life after we die, seeing how our life affected others, even after we're gone. So for instance, an easy example of this would just simply be if you're a parent, you recognize how your choices and actions as a human being while you're here affected your children, the way you raised them, the example that you played for them, the things that you did for them or did not do for them. So we're seeing both the positive and the negative in terms of our choices and actions. And we now are in the spirit world looking at our children going, how did my existence uh, as their parent affect them? And uh, as to not only who they were back then, but who they are today. And that's the important thing. And that's what we're here to talk about right now. For instance, my father passed. I was, or I think I was 35. He was 64. So there's been many years that he's watched me grow. And he has had the opportunity to see how I was affected by his life. Now, sometimes it was in the the negative. And my father used to say this to me all the time. He would say, you know, Bob, if, if I'm not serving as a good example, at least you're learning from me as a bad example. And it was true. Uh, the reality is he made some poor choices in life, and I saw the negative consequences of those choices that he made. And I consciously told myself, I am not going to be like that. I'm not going to make those same choices, and I'm not going to do that. He now is able to recognize that from where he's at and not only see it when he was alive here, he he knew it, but now he's actually seen it play out and he can either be proud of that or he can learn uh, from the things that he did or did not do as a father in relation to how it affected me in my adulthood. This is true, though, not just for any one of us in terms of our kids, but our friends and our coworkers and the, our communities. And like I said, the entire world, what we're talking about here is the ripple effect of our life. So when we're on the other side, we're in the spiritual dimension, we can see with great clarity, the ripple effect that our lives when we were in the physical had on all sorts of different people. And not just people, animals and nature and the economy, whatever it may be. There, you know, we as individuals affect a lot of different things in the world, and people is, are, are one of them. But if we did things to devastate a certain area of nature, that also then is going to affect people in the long term. And we as spiritual beings will actually see that play out as we're watching our other loved ones grow into adulthood and old age. So I find this very interesting for a lot of different reasons. One, I think it makes us think about how the ripple effect of our lives is going to affect others, not just today, but tomorrow in the future. And it makes us pause. The one thing I've learned about learning about the afterlife is that it teaches me about life. And this is one of the ways that it has done it. It makes me recognize the responsibility that each one of us has in our choices and actions and how they do create a ripple effect. And 
they can potentially affect many people as that ripple continues in time. So that's something to think about. But also one of the things that we will learn when we die and go to the spirit world is that it's not just about the people that we were directly related to. It's also our example. I, I remember when I was a kid, my friend's parents had an effect on me, even though I didn't know them very well. And that's because I saw them as examples of what I may or may not want to be. You know, I had a friend who, whose father was a lawyer. And so for the longest time, I wanted to be a lawyer. I even went to law school because when I was in the sixth grade, I met the father of, of this friend. It's, it's amazing. And, and, and then that friendship, you know, was fairly brief. And, and yet I continued to have in my mind that I wanted to be a lawyer. This happens with our neighbors, with our friends, children, with co-workers, children. It happens with a lot of different people. And again, it's not just children either. It also, we serve as examples to others as to their own lives. You know, they can look at you and they can say, I want a relationship like he has with his wife. I want to be able to be an inspiring figure like that woman is in her work. We serve as examples to our neighbors, to our friends, and to people who we don't even know are paying attention to us. And this is important for each of us to think about on a day-to-day -day basis. But one of the most important reasons that I brought this subject up is because I know a lot of you are grieving the loss of a loved one. And that could have happened recently, or it could have happened many years ago. And what I think is important to keep in mind is that when our loved ones go away from this physical realm and then go home to the spiritual dimension, our relationship with them has not ended, but it has changed. It might not be what we want. You know, if we could, we'd stop people from dying altogether, but we can't. It's the reality of life. And so one of the things that we can do to make the best of a bad situation is to recognize that my relationship with that person who has died is not done. It's not finished. They are not gone. It's different. And when we recognize that, we then can take steps to purposely work on that relationship. How? Well, we've talked about that in many ways uh, on this, this show. Over the years, since um, 2011, when I started this show, I've had many guests on. We've talked about after-death communications and mediums and near-death experiences and, you know, the things that we learn from so many different people about the afterlife. And it helps us understand what our loved ones are now doing and experiencing and going through in the spiritual dimension. And knowing this, we're able to have a new relationship with them. Why is this so new? Well, it's because they're na now able to see us. The moment that they died, and it really it can be this instantaneous, the moment that they died, they are, are now able to see us with perfect clarity. Where when they were alive, they saw us through the filter of their own lens, their own perspectives. You know, sometimes we look at people and we're, our view of them is distorted just because we have a long history with them and we never really in, their, in our minds allowed them to change. Or the reality of this is when we interact with others, we interpret our relationships based on emotions, right? So you see somebody and it's about how they make you feel. I know that I've always been entrepreneurial and I know that I've had a lot of people as I was creating a new business or doing a new project, Sometimes it made people feel bad about themselves because they wanted to be doing things and they weren't. And so when they saw me achieving some goal that I had set out for myself, they were not supportive of me. They were just the opposite. They, they were giving me all kinds of reasons why I shouldn't do it and why I was going to fail. And they acted as though they were going to protect me by convincing me that it was a bad idea to do it. And at first it used to hurt. And then eventually I realized that it, it wasn't that they didn't want to see me succeed. It wasn't that they didn't want to support me. It was how, what I was doing made them feel. 
So we don't get this anymore. We don't get that. We're not reflecting anything to our loved ones in spirit anymore that is going to make them not want to support us wholeheartedly. They see us with great clarity, meaning they know what our intentions truly are. And if they're pure and if they're good, they're able to finally see that in ways that perhaps they were never able to do before. Now, I didn't know this when my father died. When my father died, I really didn't know anything about this subject. And, and so he passed and I thought my relationship was over. I thought that was it. And he tried communicating me through what we call ADCs, after death communications. And I've talked about the ways that he did that in other shows, but that was all new to me. And I was learning and I didn't know it for sure. Now I know. And so when Melissa's father died, the end of his life, he was on medication, you know, pain medication and and so his moments of being lucid uh, were less and less with time. And so it was difficult to have a, a good conversation with him. It was, it was difficult to really communicate with him in a way where you knew he was fully understanding everything that you were saying. And in his case, when he actually passed, I got the phone call and I was driving to, I think I've described this once before, I was driving to Melissa's parents' house right after he had passed. And I had a conversation with him because I was so excited now that I could finally communicate with him with perfect clarity. And he, and he knew it. And I'm sure he was relieved by it as well because not, a lot of people don't know that they can communicate with their loved ones in spirit the second they die. In the same way, now Melissa felt a wonderful sense of relief because her father now could see her with perfect clarity. And she knew that he would be proud of her for that. And she, she wrote a poem about it because it was such a, a wonderful revelation to her to recognize that her father, who maybe never could fully see who she was as a human being, now could. And this is true for each and every one of you who have lost a loved one. We, you know, so many of you worry, do they know I love them? Oh, they know, they know you love them. They know it. Uh, they know it in ways that you might not even fully comprehend because the love that you feel for them is just embracing them in a very energetic way in the spiritual dimension. And it's wonderful. And they're trying to do the same for you, but because we're in our intellect so much, a lot of times we don't feel it. So the communication from us to them, it's perfectly clear. Now, the communication the other way can be a little bit more difficult when they're trying to communicate with us. And so we do have a lot of different ways that they can do that just through your own intuition. I know a lot of people have recognized that they can talk with their loved ones in spirit just in their minds. They can say something and they know that their loved one is impressing the answers to them almost intuitively. Other people just need to go to mediums in order for that kind of communication to happen. Now that's not as clear because, you know, the medium is then making interpretations of the information that they're getting. And a lot of times those interpretations are an error, but uh, a lot of times they're clear and most of the time they are. And, and for some, that's the best they're going to get. So it's an amazing gift that we even have anybody that can do that. That's one of the reasons that I talk about mediums and, and I think that what they do is so valuable. So why don't we leave you uh, with that? And I hope uh, that it's helpful to you. And I hope that if you haven't already, you will start to have a new conversation with your loved ones in spirit. Talk to them knowing that they can hear you. Talk to them knowing that they see you with perfect clarity and recognize that they are doing their best to try to help you out while you're here. You got someone watching your back. And that's always a wonderful thing to know. I hope you enjoyed that Afterlife TV episode. I want to thank our sponsor, Best Psychic Directory. This is my site where I've vetted all of the psychics and mediums and animal communicators on there. And you also can read over 12,000 reviews from people just like you who have got incredible readings with these gifted people. That's bestpsychicdirectory.com.
Now, if you want to make sure not to miss an episode of Afterlife TV, go to afterlifetv.com, sign up for a newsletter, or you can either like or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or subscribe on YouTube. Finally, if you can just check out my books. The first one is Answers About the Afterlife. That answers over 150 questions about life after death. And my second book is The Magic Mala. Magic Mala is all about what I learned about life while investigating the afterlife. You can check out those two books by me at BobOlson.com. That's B-O-B-O-L-S-O-N.com.